Rise Arts and Culture loves to bring diverse creative talent from around the world to the forefront. Today, we introduce a talented young African painter, Babajide Owatunji. His current show, Tribal Marks Series 2, features large, hyper-realist portraits of characters he creates. Moving on from charcoal in his first series, the latest exhibition sees the emerging artist use colour to vividly depict his subjects. A common feature in these images is the age-old practice of facial scarification. Now, the exhibition is currently on display at Taffeta in London, and I am joined by the director and founder, Ayo Ariinka. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Hello, Jason. It's good to see you again. You too. Now, of course, uh, we are seeing each other again. I was down at the exhibition, and I have to point out one thing that was amazing for me was that, at first, I thought they were photos. I mean, the, the, the realism of these pictures is incredible. Mm. And it's imbibed realism as well, because Babajide actually constructs this image. There are no sitters. There are no photographs. So it's even more powerful when you think that he's actually created something from his imagination and multiple references, and it could make them look so real. It's, it's actually an amazing skill. I, I totally agree, because I didn't even realize that there was, as you say, no sitters there, because, I mean, it was even in which ones had maybe relaxed hair or someone's, you know, the, the tears in their eyes or the, the different look, even some, um, you know, different features of them. And this is all just created from his mind. It, it, it makes it a bit easier to actually get such a diverse... Um, portfolio of um, sitters again, sitters in courts because mm -hmm. there are no real sitters. If you, if you, if you think in his artist statement, for example, it takes into consideration everything: the weather on the day, the the, 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 the skin tone, the health history of of his imagined characters. That allows him to put so much into the painting that, or, or drawings in this case, or renderings that it, it gives it a new feel, even a deeper feel than someone that actually exists, because you can mix and match as you want and create something that that actually becomes real. He wasn't always going to be an artist, though. What did he... He started off learning something completely separate to this. Well, he, he's trained as a botanist. <laughs> so he actually has a, D, a, a, a BA in botany. Yeah. And I think... I, I'm probably caught misquoting him, but I think he realised how skilled he was as, a, as an artist when he was drawing leaves, which you do incredibly as, you know, in the study of plants, mm -hmm. incredibly often in the study of plants. Um, but then he's a self-trained artist, but with a gifting that comes with... You know, that it's natural. Mm. You can't train this into people. In fact, I do have a theory that if you did go to art school, mm. a lot of this would have been trained out of him. Yes. Because we, in, in the community, will have tried to imbibe also sort of, you know, new movements. You know. When we look at botany, you know, it's, 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 there, it's such an extensive area. It's about yeah. categorizing yes. and, and documenting yes. and following the series. So I want to go back to this scarification mm. and how he, he, he sort of documents it and, and it's relevant to each person mm. and, and, and their upbringing. How is he, I guess, communicating this age-old practice in a contemporary setting? Well, it's, it's what it, the statements he makes behind the documentation. Now, one of the things I've heard him say often is, if not for the interrupted histories of the African um, society, so slavery, colonialism, um, colonialism and, all the, and all the rest, it, it's, a, it's a very valid statement to make that Facial scarifications might just have been as ubiquitous as tattoos today. Mm -hmm. And people could have used it, well, once you've had a few to drink, <laughs> wandered into a bar in Australia yeah. and get some facial scarifications done. Well, because in a way, if we look at it, you know, in, in regards to some Western cultures, you know, yeah. piercing, for instance, Absolutely. which is, you know, incredibly popular, is yeah. very much similar in a way, I guess, to the way Africans look at scarification. Yes. And because it's so, part of, so much part of that culture, if the culture wasn't interrupted or the, the promotion or the communication of the culture wasn't so often interrupted, then it would have been something that everybody would have gotten used to. It might have become a form of beauty or a form of royalty, as it was. A classic example he gave me as well when we were discussing this was um, there is a particular part, um, tribal mark that is very, very vast. Uh, it's, you know, it's four across, four up top, and it was carried by the upper echelons of the Oyo royal family in um, southwest Nigeria. Now, if that royal family stayed with the wealth and the, and the um, rich it had, nothing would have stopped one of their children marrying into the Portuguese royal family mm -hmm. or, say, the French royal family. And by, by integration into the family, the French or the Portuguese would have had to carry this tribal wax. Absolutely fascinating. As, you know, so it's things like that he's trying to com communicate in, his, in the contemporary setting.